What's up guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate these sort of stylish abstract sort of club visuals. All you got to do is just follow the tutorial step by step, shouldn't take you guys too long. And if you do make it to the end of this video, feel free to tag me in your renders, that's at Nemmotion. I'll be sharing it on my story if you tag me in it, share the love and all that. But yeah, enough rambling, let's get on with the tutorial. Right, so the first thing I want you to do once you've got Blender open is I want you to hit A and X and delete everything. That's going to allow us to start with a fresh scene. So we're going to hit Shift A, add a mesh, and we're going to add a cylinder. And we need to come to this menu here, expand that. We're going to drop the vertices to three. So we have a nice sort of triangle shape. I'm going to go into edit mode, so hit tab, come to face select here. We can delete this first face. So click on that face, hit X, delete faces. And the same with the bottom one, hit X, delete faces. Great, so come back out of edit mode, hit tab again. Just going to rotate this object along the X axis. So hit R, X, 90. And now hit S, Y, 8. So we've got a nice long triangle. Now we want to guide this cylinder along a circle path. So the way to do that is hit Shift A, add a curve, and we're going to add this circle here. Now I want you to hit S and then 8. And that's going to scale the circle up to 8. So in order to guide this object around this circle, we actually need to subdivide it first. Otherwise, the mesh will not know how to deform. So we're going to go back into edit mode again. So click on your cylinder, hit tab, go into edit mode. And I want you to come over here where it says loop cut. I want you to select this tool and we're going to change the number of cuts to 100. And all you've got to do is just click in the center of your object and it should subdivide it 100 times. Now just go back to your box select and we're going to come out of edit mode. That's done for now. So how do we get this object to actually follow this path? Well, all you've got to do is go to this spanner here where it says modifier properties. We're going to add a modifier and we're going to add a curve modifier and you'll see this curve object box you just need to assign this to your bezier circle and now you can see it's not deforming properly and that's because we need to set the deform axis to y and now you can see what that does so now all we have to do is just bring this circle in until the ring completes so we're going to go into top view so on your number pad hit seven or alternatively you can hit the tilde key and then go to top view that way so now we're in top view just click on your bezier circle and I want you to hit S and just scale that in until the circle completes. Now you kind of want both ends to slightly overlap, but really just kind of connect them together. You don't want it to overlap too much. So now the way I do this, I like to go into wireframe mode. So if you hit Z and then four, that takes you into wireframe mode. So you can clearly see the edges of the object. With your Bezier circle still selected, hit S again. We're gonna scale this in just until they join. You can actually hold shift if you want smaller increments in the scaling. So let you be a bit more precise. So just join them together. Now hit Z and then six to go back into solid state view. Now I think they're still not joining properly. So I'm just gonna join it a little bit more. Great, so now that's done, let's just apply the transforms of this object. So click your cylinder, hit control A and apply all transforms. Now what that does is it resets your transform settings to default zero while still retaining the object mesh data in your viewport. So now let's actually animate the object. So we're gonna just animate this on the Y axis. So it just rotates like that. So to do that, just bring up your timeline here. It's gonna be a 10 second animation. We're at 24 frames per second. So that's gonna be 240 on the end frame. We're gonna apply a keyframe on the Y axis on the first frame in the timeline. So just apply a keyframe on your cylinder, just on the rotation on the Y. Now come to the end and we're gonna set the end frame to 241 change this to 360 on the y-axis and we're going to apply a keyframe and that's going to give us a perfect loop now the reason why we add the keyframe to 241 rather than 240 is because if you set it to 240 because if you set it to 240 you're going to get a duplicate frame in your render and that's because the end frame will be exactly the same as the first frame um, and what that does is it kind of makes your animation stutter if you're trying to loop it and that's because you basically got a duplicate frame on the start and the end so yeah, make sure you either set it to 241 or alternatively you can set it the first frame to zero and the end frame to 240. So the animation is all keyed in, but you will notice that it sort of accelerates and decelerates as it comes to a start and end. And the reason it does that is because Blender defaults its interpolation settings to Bezier. So what you want to do is come to your timeline here with your mouse hovered over it, hit A and then T and just change that to linear and that's gonna basically get rid of any acceleration or deceleration. Great, so we're gonna add one more modifier. Let's go to our modifier properties and we're gonna add a modifier and we're gonna add that screw modifier. So just click on this 
and the hierarchy is very important on this so make sure that's on the top and you're going to see that's looking really ugly so we need to change a few settings on this first of all we'll make sure the angle is set to 360 but we're going to set the screw to one meter we're going to change the axis to the x-axis and on steps we're going to set this to one and make sure you set the same on your render set it to one and now hit play and you get these really cool ring patterns great so that's all the modeling done so just save what you've got now We're going to jump into render mode now. So hit Z and then 8. It's going to take you into render mode so we can start shading the object. Now we're going to go to a frame where you can see a lot of object data. We'll go for frame 48. First thing I want to do is go to my world settings, make this black. So just drop that down, click on your cylinder, and let's start shading the object. So we're going to go over here onto this little corner. So bring your mouse to the top corner on the right and just drag that in. That's going to create a new window for us. Now go to the editor type, we're going to go to shader editor, bring this in and we're going to add a new material slot and we're going to basically and we're going to basically make two shaders talk to each other. So the way you do that is just bring your material output over here. We're going to hit shift A, add a shader, we go for mix shader, pop that in between. So we're going to have this principal BSDF shader plugged into this input. We're going to hit shift A, add a shader, add an emission pop the emission into the second input on the mix shader. And now as you can see, as you play with this fact, this basically controls the mix between one node with another. And we're gonna use a texture to sort of control the way these two nodes talk to each other. So we're gonna set the strength to eight, give it a nice strong emission. And the color is not too important right now, just set that to blue for now. We're actually gonna do the coloring in the compositor, but for now, you can't have it set to white, you need it to be a color. So we'll just go with blue for now. Right, next step, we're gonna hit Shift A, add a texture, and we're gonna add a wave texture. And this is gonna allow us to use this texture to sort of define the way these two nodes talk to each other. So plug the fac into the fac, and you should start to see some waves forming on this object. But I wanna have a bit more control over the way they talk to each other. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, add a color ramp, pop that in between, and now as you drag these sliders in, you can sort of give the wave texture a bit more definition and fidelity. Now I'm just gonna make some adjustments to the wave texture, but I encourage you guys to play around with some settings. Um, you can just copy mine if you want, but it's good to just experiment and get some patterns that you like. But I'm just gonna set the scale on the wave texture to 0.2. I'm gonna drop the detail to zero. And I'm just gonna turn my overlays off here now so I can see how the render's gonna look. Next step, I actually want you guys to go to Edit, Preferences, make sure you have Node Wrangler installed. So go to Add-ons, type in Node Wrangler. Just make sure that's checked there, Node Wrangler, because this allows us to have a bit more control in this window. So just hit Control T on your wave texture. That's gonna add a mapping node and a texture coordinate, and just make sure Generated is plugged into the mapping node. Right, and that's pretty much all the shading done. I actually forgot to add the camera now, so just, um, we're gonna come out of render mode quickly, so hit Z and then six, pop your overlays back on, and let's just add our camera. So hit Shift A, add our camera, and we obviously need this to actually render out the animation. Um, hit Alt R, so you reset the rotation, and we're gonna hit G and then Z, and we're gonna bring that up. Hit zero to go into camera modes, G, Z again, and just bring that up until you fit the whole thing in the frame. Just remember with that screw modifier, it sort of um, sort of changes the size of the object a bit. So make sure you set your camera so that it fills out the frame where the object actually peaks in size, just so you always have the object within frame. Now let's just adjust our scene settings a bit. So come over here, we're doing this in Eevee. We're gonna add some bloom. I always find the Eevee bloom really strong. So just drop that down. It's so about there. Now we're gonna go down here, go to color management, and on look, I want you to change that to very high contrast. And remember, if you do want more waves in your object, you can pump the scale up like that. It gives you some different sort of looks. But I like it where it was. Now, let's pick a frame that looks good. Let's say this frame here. Pick a frame where you get a lot of light in the scene, because we're actually gonna be rendering out one frame, and we're gonna be using the compositor to actually color the scene. So yeah, pick a good frame, we'll say 71, and let's just render out one image. So hit F12, 
Now once that's rendered, just close this. We're gonna to go to composite in over here. Check this box, use nodes, and you can see your render just here. Drag this output here. Now I want you to hit Shift A, add output, and we're gonna add a viewer node. This just allows us to see the render in full view. So plug that image into there, and you should be able to see this. Now hold Shift and right click and drag this down so you can join these two nodes together. Hit Shift A. We're going to search here, we're going to search for mix. We're going to pop this in between here and I want you to change this to hue. Now I want you to hit Shift A and we're going to add an input and we're going to add a texture. Just pop that there and plug the color into the second image input. Now hit Shift A, add a converter and I want you to add a color ramp. Just pop that in between there. Now let me explain to you exactly what each one of these nodes and how we're going to be utilizing them. Now this mix node we've added is quite similar to the one we added earlier to the object. It basically lets you blend two different nodes together and change the way they interact with each other. So we have our image input here going into one side and we've assigned this to hue so we can use a texture to essentially control the way the colors talk to each other. So we're using the color ramp here to basically decide the colors and we're using the texture basically control the way the colors interact with each other. But we haven't actually got any textures loaded up into this texture node. You actually have to create one and you can do that by going to this section here, texture properties. You need to add a new one and on this type, we're gonna set this to blend and we're gonna change the progression to spherical. And as you can see on this preview, this is gonna determine the way the colors interact with each other. Now that we've made this texture here, assign this to our node here. So we're gonna click on this, assign that texture that we just created. You should sort of see that spherical pattern in this little preview here. So we've got this texture going into this color ramp and this is where we're going to actually decide the colors that we want to blend. Now I want you guys to be creative with this. Um, you can follow my color, you, you can just copy me if you want but you're just gonna get the exact same render as me and it's good to play around with different color patterns. But I'm gonna guide you through it anyway. So yeah, feel free to copy if you want. So you've got a black and a white here and as you can see, it's having no effect. And that's because black and white sort of act as no color, which will just leave you with the default color of the image coming in. So let's start adding some color into this. So we're gonna click on the white slider, click on this bit here and let's give it a nice sort of green and you can sort of see the colors coming in now. And now let's change this one, pump up the white, let's change this one to sort of pink, pinky color. And you can actually add a slider in between these. So click on this little plus, that will add a new one. You can make this a sort of blue if you like, and then you can drag that in to around here. And what you can also do is you can change the interpolation between the colors. So you have all these different options and these will sort of change the way the sliders sort of fade into each other. So um, I'm gonna go for B spline. I think it gives it a nice sort of effect. I'm just gonna play around with these till I get something I like. You can also play around with this texture node here. As you drag the scale up, you can sort of change the shape of the actual texture if you wanna get sort of the ends of the colors in. So I'm gonna set this one to 2.2 and on the Y, I'm gonna set that to 1.2. And just play around with these settings till you get some nice sort of colors that you like. Right, now I'm just gonna add a bit of fog glow. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, add a filter, gonna add a glare node, pop this after the hue, and I'm gonna set this to fog glow, and that gives just a bit of uh, glow to the render. I think it looks cool. You can always render out different frames if you wanna see how it looks on other frames. That's the problem with the compositor, it's very, um, you can't really see things in real time, so that can be a bit annoying, but you can always uh, check out different frames and see how they look. Let's save what we've got, and we're gonna come to our output settings. Come to your output properties here. On your output, make sure you set that to somewhere you can find it. File format, set that to FFmpeg video. Encoding, change this to MP4. Leave the video codec at H.264. Output quality, we'll put that as perceptually lossless. Oh, and I forgot one last node you can add as well, which can just give it a bit more depth, is a lens distortion node. So if you hit Shift A, go to Distort, Lens Distortion, pop that just after your glare node. 
pump up the dispersion to about 0.3 to just add a bit more depth to your scene. Now all you gotta do is come to render and hit render animation and you're done. Right, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you feel like you gain value from the work I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll be offering some rewards very soon. Also, if you did make it to the end and you want to share your work, feel free to tag me on Instagram. My handle is at Nevmotion. I'll be leaving that down below. I'll also share it on my story if you tag me on it. And if you want to play around with the project file, I'll be leaving a link to that in the description. You can find that on my website. That's nemmotion.co.uk.